Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales of the Space. Space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. An insignificant ball of dirt. Written by Echoing Cascade. Warlord Moors of the Mysorian Empire was elated. He had finally done it. He had broken the Skillet's line. And now his armada was approaching the planetoid designated as Skillet 4. When we declared war, they fought with what little they had. We made quick work of their meager defenses. That is, uh, until we reached the sector. Then the Skillets turned rabid. They managed to stop our advance by sheer force of will. They even pulled forces from the cradle world to protect this little ball of dirt. And now, I'm gonna find out why. Governor Strack was waiting for the Mysoran warlord. He had ordered a total surrender. We, uh, tried to keep them from here, but it's too late now. The governor mused. He had poured a measure of wine for the warlord and himself. Before this meeting was over, they would both need it. May the gods have mercy, because, uh, he certainly won't. He lived alone, far from any city. He was spading a fertile soil of his enormous garden. The vegetables were looking good this year. He loved the peace, the quiet. He half looked at the suns and smiled. Then he saw the combat vessels up by, then another, and another. His smile faded. By the time the first explosion reached his ears, he was seeing red. Literally, the only sound from that on was his heart, beating nearly hard enough to shatter his ribcage. He calmly walked to his old shed next to his house, pulled the thick chains around the door with one hand, and tore them like so much wet tissue paper. He would need his combat kit once more. Warlord Moors made his way to the planet governor's office. He didn't expect any trouble, but still came accompanied by four dozen elite warriors who would secure the building. He forcefully opened the doors, grabbed a drink waiting for him on the side of the large table, and sat down, grinning at the governor. His grin turned into a frown of puzzlement at the governor's expression. I expected him to look meek and defeated, why is he looking at me with, uh, pity? No matter. He had a mystery to elucidate before continuing with the war, and he was going to get his answers. All right, Governor. I want to know what this planet hides. What secret is so important that protecting it takes precedent over your cradle world? The Governor gave a weak smile and nodded. A long time ago... A portal opened, and out came a soldier. A marine, as he called himself. He was clad in armor and carried a small arsenal with him. The warlord was expecting many things. He had ample time to come up with theories. Some alien warrior was not one of them. You're hiding a uh, soldier? The governor nodded. To say that he was on edge when he arrived would be an understatement. He was ready for combat at all times. He didn't even rest or eat for the first few months. I'm sorry. Uh, did you say months? Yeah, he's tougher than any species catalogued. When he eventually calmed down and allowed us to run some tests, we found out his species must have evolved on a death world. The warlord rose to his feet, panic flaring. Death worlders are real. The governor drank deep from his goblet. Yes, but what he is is nowhere near important as what he can and will do. The warlord sat down, looking bewildered. Death wilders are only theorized possible. No sentient species has ever risen from a world where everything is out to kill you. And the fact that they exist is uh, not the issue. He liked toiling the earth, said it calmed him down. He liked his solitude, so we gave him a blot of land and left him to his own devices. The governor put his drink down and looked at the warlord's eyes. Then the helix attacked us. Never heard of them. And you never will. 
Until that day, we took his stories of battling machine-enhanced demons, amoral angels, and other monstrosities as a way for him to deal with his PTSD. The governor was shaking now as he recalled what he had seen. But it wasn't. You have no idea of the brutality he is capable of, the horrors he can inflict on his enemies. He must have faced demons and other abominations and learned true cruelty from them. That's the only way what he does makes any sense. The warlord down the rest of his drink in one gulp. His nerves were failing him, but he rallied. A frightening tale for certain, but if you think this is going to save your people, you are wrong. Besides, if he is as powerful as you claim, why do you protect him? That makes no... Explosions and screams coming from the outside cut the conversation short. The warlord tried to contact his guards, but all he got in response was gurgling noises. The sounds of frantic firing. Distinctly unhealthy wet sounds and screams. Seemingly unending screams. We weren't protecting him. We were protecting you from him. You see, the reason you haven't heard of the Helix is because... He killed them. All of them. What? What does he want? I'm sure that we can come to an understanding. The governor took the wine bottle on the table and handed it to the warlord, who began to drink from it in earnest. You awoke him from his peaceful slumber. You rekindled his anger. Now he's rage and a hatred in the shape of a man. There is no reasoning with him. Now... He only wants one thing. What? To remove what he views as enemies in the most brutal and expedient way possible. To rip and tear until it is done. End of story. Story number two. Humans are perceptive. Written by H. Defort. Fellow soldiers of the Tau Sede Special Command Group, welcome to the Ford Operations Base of Orion Sector. Today, I have to brief you on humans. I know you're highly motivated and ready for battle, but I was informed that the previous units have underperformed due to overconfidence and lack of mental preparation. As you prepare for tomorrow's battle, you need to understand what you are facing. Let me get this straight. Some say humans are lucky, and that's why they manage to beat everyone in battle. As if they had some primitive bond with the universe, all psionic powers. But it's much, much worse than that. If it was just psionic powers, our psi repressors would work against them. But these are fucking useless. Humans are not lucky. There is no such thing as luck. They are not psionic. And they don't have a secret bond with the universe. They are just so incredibly perceptive. Some say human perception peaks straight into the quantum fabric of reality, surfing on the quantum foam, drunk with unconscious mysticism. They might even cheat the universe's arrow of time by seeing possibilities that exist beyond the thin sliver of the now. They call this phenomenon the Penrose Peak, and it's part of the brain's spine structure. Their mind is literally made of quantum tunnels. Don't assume the human you see in front of you is really just standing in front of you. His mind is pervading the whole room, and he is not even paying attention. Yet. Don't try and follow a human in negotiations. His daydreams will betray you. Don't assume a human will not feel the sabotage in his weapon. He will have an afterthought. Don't expect humans to choose the wrong button, pill, door, or setting at random. They will sense the purpose beyond your clever obfuscation. Don't lose time lying to them. They'll most likely defeat your most complex ruses. If asked about these physically impossible feats, they will tell you that they don't have any idea. They just knew. They had an intuition. They felt something. Luck, fate, a hunch, a tickle on the tip of the nose. One of the options seemed friendlier. Or somehow 
talked to them. They didn't like the feeling of this or all that. They defy common sense. They make a joke out of causality. They untangle the quantum puzzle. You are facing humans in battle. Don't give them time, space, or options. Don't leave anything lying on the floor. Humans might randomly assemble some impossible contraption and just kill you with the most innocent-looking items. They call it MacGyvers. We've lost thousands of soldiers to those. Even when they don't understand what an item is or how it works, they can intuitively turn it into a lethal weapon. Just attack the human with overwhelming force. Don't overthink it. Don't wait it out. Don't try and outsmart them. Frontal attack, no staging, and maybe, maybe on that specific day, the human won't get too lucky, intuitive, or crafty. They won't do anything seemingly impossible, won't randomly defeat your tactics, won't break the laws of the fucking universe for once. And then, maybe, on a single soldier from your unit will survive the battle, barely, they return to camp. With a fucking broomstick duct taped onto the Denabian plasma torch embedded into his pectoral exoskeleton for good measure. MacGyvered, as the humans say. You'd call it a glorious victory. Humans will just call it a Monday morning. And they'll be back for the broomstick. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it, click With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just want to give a quick thanks to the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia, Barky, Fudic Yol, Cam Maxwell, Casper Onholtz, White Van 420, Lord Asrakal, Arcalian, and Oakfield.